A Rockford man drowns in a flooding accident after a pickup truck is swept into Keith Creek. Plus, several local businesses are hit hard by flooding over the weekend. What damages are being reported on Charles Street? And the summer travel season's underway. The pain at the pump being felt by many four city drivers. Live from WTVO 17, this is Eyewitness News at 5. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm Wendell Edwards. Thank you for being with us tonight. A 76-year-old Rockford man is dead after being trapped by flood water. Just after 10 last night, the man was a passenger in a pickup truck that tried to pull into the Schnooks parking lot on Charles Street. The truck drove into rushing water and was pulled into Keith Creek, where it began to sink. The driver of the truck was able to get out of a window and pulled to safety. The passenger was trapped when it fully submerged into the water. First responders were unable to rescue him. The truck was pulled out just after one this morning when waters receded. That's when the man was pronounced dead. His identity has not been released until relatives are notified. More rain is set to move through the state line this evening. That means flooding become a major concern once again. Let's get checked back in with Candace for the latest on the severe weather threat. Candace. Yeah, guys, it's not only the flooding risk that we have to be concerned with, but it's also the damaging wind threat that we have to be concerned with. And because of that, a moderate risk for severe thunderstorms or widespread severe thunderstorms has now been in place for all of northern Illinois and most of southern Wisconsin, surrounded by that enhanced risk and then the slight risk you see there in yellow. So what does this mean? It means that our confidence in the area experiencing widespread severe thunderstorms has gone up over the last several hours. So with that in mind, we continue to watch these thunderstorms as they build out in Iowa. You can see how much lightning has also been associated with that, a sign that one, the storms are strengthening, but two, the fact that we've got so much moisture in the atmosphere, which also leads to that potential for some flash flooding. Now, numerous severe thunderstorms storm warnings have been issued. There are also flash flood warnings as well as a tornado warning just to the north and northwest here of Cedar Rapids. General motion of these storms moving to the east. We may see them dive a little further to the southeast feeding into some better instability or higher instability just off to our southwest. But we've got a lot of that already in place here across northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. So what are our greatest risks here when we look at these thunderstorms? Well, by far that damaging wind threat and winds in excess of 75 miles per hour will be possible, but also that flash flooding risk. Now we do have to be concerned with a tornado risk, especially if we see one, any individual storms that form out ahead of that main line, but then two, any little kinks or kind of notches within this line of thunderstorms as it moves through. So I anticipate our storm coverage to increase here between about six and seven o'clock across northwest Illinois, overspreading much of the region through the 10 o'clock hour before then moving off to the east here as we look after midnight tonight. Now meteorologist Joy Marino alongside meteorologist Owen Zarley are out monitoring conditions across northwest Illinois. I do want to check in with them to kind of get an idea of what they're seeing, what the environment conditions they see out there this evening. Joey? All right, we will check back in with Joey and Owen here in just a bit. I know that they are going to kind of position themselves uh, to get an idea of what those thunderstorms out in Iowa are doing. Uh, we will check back with them, hopefully here during the 5 o'clock hour. If we do not, it'll be within that 6 o'clock hour because those guys are our eyes and ears as to what's going on here on the ground. And I know they'll be doing a couple of uh, Facebook Lives here on our Eyewitness News page as well. So Wendell Mimi will check back with them here shortly, but a look at when we can expect these thunderstorms to kind of move out and calmer conditions to develop coming up a little later. Candace, thank you. Several local businesses are dealing with the aftermath of this weekend's flash floods as they get ready for possible more. And many of those businesses are along Charles Street near Keith Creek. A radio repair shop and a mechanic shop have closed due to flooding, as well as delicious ink tattoo parlor. Some businesses are reporting about four feet of water. Culture Shock's owner says without the work done in a nearby culvert, the damage could have been a lot worse. With something this catastrophic, it's, it's hard to point blame at it uh, because I have seen them doing a lot to, to fix the area and fix the flood water. And if they hadn't been doing that, I'd have to say I'd be in a lot worse situation. 
Skyler Davis adds in 18 years of owning a business, he has seen five significant floods at his store. Now, more work is set to be done on a Winnebago County Road. Construction on Route 173 will start next Monday. The work zone is from Lyford Road to the Boone County line. Crews will mill, patch, and resurface the road. Drivers can expect daily lane closures. The project is set to be completed by September 15th. Chesney Park is making sandbags available to residents along the Rock River. Village officials say water levels on the rock were recorded at nearly 9 feet as of this morning, and they expect the river to crest at over 10 feet by Wednesday. People can pick up sandbags at the Chesney Town Center on North 2nd Street. Other cities in the state line are offering sandbags as well. For residents near Rockford, sandbags can be picked up at the New Milford Fire Station on Will James Road. That's just southeast of the Rockford Airport. Roscoe Public Works also has sandbags at its offices on Swanson Road. That's just off to the right of Route 251 past Forest Hills Road. If you try to fill up this weekend, then you know rises, prices are rising at the pump. The average price of gas in Rockford, $3.60 a gallon now. That's a 10 cent rise in the last week and 16 cents higher than a month ago. Experts gas buddies say Hurricane Barrel had no major impact on prices, but we all can continue to see small fluctuations in the price as we head to the busiest weeks of the summer travel season. Former President Donald Trump selects his running mate. Up next, the news comes just days after an attempt on Trump's life at a rally. And coming up at six, dozens of dogs are dumped at a state line dog park. The call and cries for help made by Boone County Animal Services tonight. You're watching Eyewitness News, your home team, with Mimi Murphy, Wendell Edwards, Scott Leber, and Chief Meteorologist Candace King. It's the first day for the Republican National Convention, and former President Trump has made his choice for vice president. Tonight's events are still expected to focus on the economy, even after Saturday's shooting at a Trump rally in Pennsylvania. The former president was injured. Mary Alice Parks reports from the convention site in Milwaukee. The great state of Iowa proudly cast all of its 40 votes for President Donald J. Trump. Republicans gathering in Milwaukee to formally nominate former President Donald Trump as the GOP presidential candidate. The former president receiving enough convention delegate votes with today's official roll call. Some of his children appearing on the convention floor. Hereby declaring him the Republican nominee for President of the United States of America. And Trump choosing Ohio Senator J.D. Vance as his vice president and running mate. This comes happened. just two days after an assassination attempt on Trump at a rally in Pennsylvania. The investigation into the shooting growing. The FBI says 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks fired the shots that injured Trump and two other people and killed one man, 50-year-old Corey Copperator. He's hailed as a hero for shielding his family. Investigators believe Crooks acted alone. The FBI looking through phone and computer records, talking to those who knew him, trying to determine a motive. Now two law enforcement officials tell ABC News the building where Crooks climbed to the roof and opened fire was a staging area for a local police tactical team there to watch over the crowd. It's unclear how Crooks gained access. A source familiar with the matter telling ABC News the day of the shooting, Crooks told his father he wanted to go to the gun range. So his dad let him take the gun, which we're told wasn't unusual. Now, in his true social post making that announcement, the former president talked about J.D. Vance's work as a businessman, as a senator, and, of course, his book, Hillbilly Elegy. And the Biden campaign is also out with a statement already responding to this announcement. They said, quote, billionaires and corporations are literally rooting for J.D. Vance. They know he and Trump will cut taxes and send prices skyrocketing for everyone else. Mary Alice Parks, ABC News, Milwaukee. Storms will soon roll through the state line once again. After the break, Candace tells us about the biggest hazards for our region. Now, your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. All right, well, we continue to monitor the conditions across northern Illinois as thunderstorms have quickly developed out in Iowa. Now, a little further to our west, we want to check back in with meteorologist Joy Marino, who is also out with meteorologist Owen Zarley. You guys are out in western Stevenson County, out in Lena, kind of keeping an eye on things as they progress in from the west. Joey, tell us a little bit about what you're seeing and kind of what you're observing uh, with the weather conditions out there this evening. 
Yeah, good uh, evening, Candace, and good evening, everybody. Yes, we're live here in Lena, just off of Highway 20, and we're actually seeing quite a bit. We've seen the cumulus field that you have uh, mentioned. It is actually uh, to the uh, is actually behind us now, a little bit to the east of us. But a pretty interesting uh, cloud feature that we're going to show you here. I'm just going to turn the camera. Um, looking to the southwest, if the camera would turn, uh, you kind of see the anvil of the thunderstorms that are over uh, central and eastern Iowa. Again, you were talking about uh, storm mode being pretty important, and for the most part, they are a cluster of thunderstorms that are severe warned, uh, but these are the this is the anvil or the high clouds that are coming off of the severe warned thunderstorms out in eastern Iowa, and they're moving slowly about... 20 to 30 miles per hour to the east. And so we're here in Lena and we're going to be watching those thunderstorms as they uh, approach our area. But just looking at satellite and radar, there may be a tower or a towering cumulus, a storm starting to develop right on the state line, the Illinois Wisconsin border. And then we may have a prefrontal uh, supercell or a thunderstorm uh, that may be developing out in Carroll County. So we're going to be looking at our options, seeing what's the best choice uh, as we uh, see these storms approach the area. So we got a couple of options on what we're going to be heading to uh, in the next move here. But um, again, we have that severe thunderstorm watch that is all the way out towards Interstate 39. Uh, so just make sure you're taking preparations in check. Again, these are going to be very strong storms with the likelihood for damaging winds. And also uh, a couple of tornadoes are going to be possible. But right now, though, we're seeing just the clouds come in from the west, but we're going to be making our next move as they approach uh, here us in Lena. But live here from Lena, meteorologist Joey Marino, I'll send it back to you in the studio. All right. Thanks so much, Joy, for that report. It's very important to make sure we've got those eyes and ears out. And he will be out along with Owen here uh, over the next several hours. Now, as you mentioned, it's getting hot, sticky out there. Temperatures, uh, Terry checking in here at 89. Our weather watcher, Mike, out in Forston at 88 degrees. Now, when we look at those thunderstorms, these are the ones Joy was talking about. You can actually see those clouds building in over across the northwest Illinois. Now, those have quickly turned severe here this evening with numerous severe thunderstorm warnings. Even a tornado warning and flash flood warnings. Now, the expectation for those storms out in Iowa to quickly move to the east, forming more into a line by the time they get here. Now, as Joy mentioned, there are some thunderstorms that are trying to develop, or at least some towers that are trying to go up. So we could see some isolated thunderstorms out ahead of this main line. If we do, that severe threat would turn to wind, but also we'd have to watch for that isolated tornado risk because there is a boundary right over northern Illinois. And any storm that latches along that could enhance a little of that low level spin in the environment. But as we get through the six, seven o'clock hour, these are the storms that'll be moving through. This will pose a damaging wind threat with winds in excess of 75 miles per hour. And where we end up with one, any individual thunderstorms that form out ahead of that line or these little notches, this is where we could see that isolated tornado risk. So a lot to look at here as we go through this evening. And I mentioned this before, um, it may be a good idea if you've got plans to be out tonight to kind of consider changing those plans, especially if you're going to be out during the time that those storms are moving through. The good news, things will dry out. It'll still feel sticky tomorrow after temperatures are down to 70 here tonight, 84 tomorrow, but we're in the upper 70s, low 80s as we look through the end of the week. Candace, thank you. Wisconsin next with sports. Baseball's all-stars are getting ready to put on a show tomorrow night. We're going to hear from the Cubs star player next. Now sports with sports director Scott Lever. The Cubs, White Sox, and the rest of Major League Baseball teams are off on their all-star break doing things other than baseball. Unless they are all-stars, then they're in Arlington, Texas. That's where the all-star game will be played tomorrow night. Today's schedule included team pictures. The stars all looking their best for the cameras. Cubs pitcher Shota Imanaga was in the group of National League stars, and he was asked today what the biggest difference is between baseball here and baseball in Japan. Oh, I was waiting for this question, um, Good. and I had an answer prepared. So when you, uh, when you take a shower, you have to adjust the temperature of the water. So in Japan, you can just set the temperature, and the temperature, that temperature of water just comes out nice and easy. Over here, you have to kind of guess, like if it, you know, sometimes it's too hot, sometimes it's too cold. So uh, I think I want to get a, some practice in. That way, you know, I can do that in one shot. The things we learned during All-Star Week. Well, former Brewer Corbin Burns has been picked to be the starting pitcher for the American League tomorrow night. He's now with the Orioles. He has nine wins this season and an ERA of 2.93. 
This is Burns' fourth straight All-Star game. Pirates rookie Paul Skeens was named the National League starting pitcher last week. Tonight, the big event will be the home run derby. Eight sluggers are entered, and the Mets' Pete Alonso is one of the favorites. He's already a two-time winner. The other competitors will be Gunnar Henderson, Alec Bohm, Bobby Witt Jr., Marcelo Zuna, Jose Ramirez, Adolis Garcia, and Teoscar Hernandez. The home run derby will be shown on ESPN. The All-Star Game will be shown on Fox 39. That's tomorrow night, starting at 7. There will be an hour-long pregame show right before that. The Rivets will be playing ball tonight in Loves Park if the weather is favorable, and that's a big if. They will be hosting the Kenosha Kingfish. The best golfers on the planet are getting ready for golf's final major of the year, the British Open. It's going to tee off Thursday at Royal Troon Golf Course in Scotland. Golfers got in another practice round today. Now, this might be the final British Open for Tiger Woods. Masters champion Scotty Scheffler and U.S. Open champion Bryson DeChambeau will be two of the favorites. There will be a record purse this year of $17 million. The winner will get $3.1 million of that. At Sports, we'll be right back. Well, as you've been telling us, we need to get ready for round three. Yeah, we've got severe thunderstorms that have quickly developed in Iowa. So that line is kind of progressing further east, nearing the Mississippi River. Severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado warnings have been issued. But there's also a couple cells that we're kind of keeping an eye on some building clouds right near the state line. And then another one out in Carroll County. I know meteorologist Joey Marino had mentioned that, kind of keeping an eye on. If we see those continue to grow, they could quickly develop into thunderstorms within the next 20, 25 minutes. But there are the storms you see moving into northeast Iowa here this evening on our first warning interactive radar and those are the warnings that we have. Now the general progression of these storms are to the east and southeast. We may see some of them start to dip a little further southeast feeding into some better instability but regardless that wind threat is there along with that isolated tornado threat and the flash flooding risk as well. So a lot to kind of watch as we go through this evening. Temperatures tonight down around 70. 84 still a little muggy tomorrow but much more comfortable the rest of the week. Thank you, Candace. And thanks for watching. We'll see you at 6.